Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back for Word Study Wednesday. This has been a series that I've been doing here on my channel. If you are new to Word Studies, I will have a playlist link down below, and there will be a Tip Tuesday video as well that kind of walks you through my process of doing a Word Study, the resources that I use um, to pull my notes, get the Strong's Concordance number, things like that. So that is extremely helpful if you're new to Word Studies. But uh, for this little mini series that we're doing, I'm continuing to work through the new word focus cards from Open Journey. This is set three. And these are meant to correspond with the Living Stones uh, devotional release that I've been sharing here on my channel. There has been a ton of content. If you have not seen those videos yet, I would highly encourage you to. I have been getting so much positive feedback from you guys. I've been doing them very differently. I'm spending about 30 minutes or so, the first part of the video, deep diving into the study portion that I went through. Um, and then I go into an art process. So uh, you can just skip and watch the art, uh, but I've been trying to share a little bit more of the behind the scenes that's been happening for years um, that goes into my Bible journaling that you guys don't necessarily get to see. And so I thought I'd start sharing that with you guys uh, so you can see it's not just about the art, that there is quite a bit of time that goes into the study before it reached the art portion. So same goes for these Word Study Wednesday videos. I'm gonna share with you my study notes. I will put a timestamp down below if you wanna just skip ahead to the process. Process on these cards is gonna be pretty simple since I'm spending quite a bit of time in the study, but I will still be doing some fun techniques using different things. Um, so I'll have that timestamp down there if you wanna just skip ahead to the process. But uh, for this week, there were two separate cards that I thought that would pay well with the process video that I did this week. So this week's topic was uh, the rock in the wilderness. We were looking at the story of Moses striking the rock in the wilderness to provide water for the Israelites. And so as I went through the cards, I came across water and speak. Uh, speak had that verse in Numbers 28. That's the second account of Moses striking the rock. And uh, so these are the two I thought would go well if you're wanting to kind of keep things in a theme the way that I have been doing. And I just, I kind of looked at both of them and I was like, oh, I'm going to go with speak. And that is the card that we we're going to be doing today. But in all honesty, as I started to do the, the, study portion, I was like, ah, there isn't a whole lot of wow factor here. Is this going to be video worthy? But I took a break, walked away, uh, kind of did some other things, came back to it, walked away, came back to it. And in the end, I really kind of pulled things together and really had this amazing kind of revelation, I guess, from this study. And I wanted to kind of share with you that process and what my thinking was um, in the end as I was studying this word. So the word speaks, she's got uh, New Testament and Old Testament verses. So she has the Greek word here, which is laleo. That's G2980. Um, but the Old Testament is going to be a different word. It's going to be in the Hebrew. So you could do essentially two separate studies here. Uh, the Hebrew word for speak is uh, Debar, H1696. Now, as I was looking into this uh, and looking at the verses, there's also a word, um, H1697, it's spelled the same way, D-A-B-A-R, but the pronunciation's a little bit different. Uh, and so it'd be interesting to kind of see the correlation between those words, the relationship between those two words, um, and kind of do a study down that route if you wanted to. So I'm not gonna talk about that in here, um, but I did wanna kind of point you in that direction if you were looking to even go a deeper uh, dive into your word study, that might be an interesting kind of path to head down. Uh, but the meaning is essentially the same. Same. So the Greek version, uh, laleo, uh, the usage is going to be to utter a voice or emit a sound. Pretty basic, right? When we think about what the word speak means, uh, to use the tongue or the faculty of speech to utter articulate sounds. Uh, the Hebrew one, version says to speak, declare, converse, command, promise, warn, threaten, sing, uh, really, you know, making noises, with your mouth that are articulate sounds, right? Uh, and so as I was writing that down, I was like, well, that's kind of boring, right? There's no like, 
whoa, like hidden meaning of this word. Like we've discovered kind of with some of the other words when they are translated from the original language to our language. But the revelation really came in the studying of the passages. So I'm not going to go too deep in every single one of them, but I am going to run through all of them with you. And um, for Matthew 10, 19 through 20 says, but when they hand you over, do not worry about how or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given you in that hour. For it is not you who are speaking speaking, but it is the spirit of your father who is speaking to you. So here you'll see, you know, it's not speak, it's speaking. Um, but I share in that, um, Tip Tuesday video, looking at the Blue Letter Bible app, how to look at words on there. And it's very easy to see, um, which word, uh, is, is that, uh, G2980. First Peter 4, 11, whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking actual words of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, this passage is referring to speaking gifts versus serving gifts. These are the gifts um, that we receive with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so, Different people have different giftings, right? And those giftings are given to us from God. Those are a blessed gift. Um, we shouldn't be, you know, coveting somebody else's gift that they've been given. We should be um, growing and flourishing our own gift. And there are differences in those gifts. You can read more about that in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 goes into the gifts. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14.5, uh, this kind of goes along with that passage in 1 Peter. It says, Now I wish that you all spoke in tongues, but rather that you would prophesy, and greater is the one who promises than the one who speaks in tongues, unless he interprets so that the church may receive edification. Now I'm not going to go too much into what it means to be speaking tongues. Um, there is some commentary from John MacArthur that this is actually referring to being able to speak multi multiple languages. It's the gifting of speaking multiple languages. Languages, um, and that was being twisted in the church in Corinth at that time um, and being used in a negative way. And so you can kind of go into that and study that if you want. Man, that church of Corinth has just been popping up. It was in my sermon on Sunday. We talked about Corinth, I believe, this week. Uh, yes. So Corinthians, man, just seems to be just seems to be the reoccurring theme lately. John 15, 20, and I know that his commandment is eternal life. Therefore, the things I speak, I speak just as the Father has told me. 2 Corinthians eleven seventeen. When I what I am saying, I am not saying as the Lord would, but as in foolishness in this confidence of boasting. Uh, so this word saying is that same word for speak. Luke 1, 22, but when he came out, he was unable to speak to them and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple and he repeatedly made signs to them and remained speechless. First Corinthians 13, 1, if I speak with the tongues of mankind and of angels do not have love, uh, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or clanging cymbal. Again, talking about, um, you know, that gifting of speaking in different languages, that's the tongue, tongues of mankind. Uh, Acts eleven fifteen, and as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as He did upon us at the beginning. So, all this, this theme of speaking and speaking and speaking. I guess I've never picked that up as I'm reading through the Bible. Just how frequently that word and that phrase is is put out there. So our focus verse that we're going to be looking at is Matthew 12, 34, 37 through 37. Um, but I'm going to skip that for a second and go through the Old Testament verses really quick. Um, and then we'll come back to the notes for that. So Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18, 18, I will raise up for them a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak to them everything that I command him. Ezekiel 12, 25, for I, the Lord, will speak whatever word I speak, and it will be performed. It will no longer be delayed, for in your days, you rebellious house, I will speak the word and perform it, declares the Lord God. Exodus 20, 19, then they said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. First Samuel 3, 10, then the Lord came and stood and called as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. 
Numbers 28, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron, assemble the congregation and speak to the rock before their eyes that it shall yield its water. So you shall bring water for them out of the rock and have the congregation and their livestock drink. Now, if you remember from our process video this week in this passage in Numbers, um, you know, Moses and Aaron are told to speak to the congregation. Um, or I'm sorry, excuse me, speak to the rock, speak to the rock and water will come forward. But instead, Moses chooses to go and speak to the people and he speaks um, angrily and in contempt of them. And uh, as we look at all of these various verses, I kept thinking, gosh, the, the, the magnitude of our speech, the importance of speech, speaking into, um, you know, I, I began to speak and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Uh, just the, the power behind speech, so to say, and how we speak. So coming to Matthew 12, uh, she has Matthew 12, 34, but I went ahead and included all the way to 37. Uh, it says, you offspring of vipers, this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, you offspring of vipers, how can you, being evil, express any good things? For the mouth speaks from that which fills the heart. The good man brings out of his good treasure what is good, and the evil man brings out of his evil treasure what is evil. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Here in this passage, we see the power of speech. Uh, just before this, Jesus had cast a demon out of a man. Um, and the Pharisees witnessed this and they were speaking out against him. Basically, they're declaring that Jesus must be from Satan if he was able to uh, call the demon out of the man and heal the man. And so they witnessed this miracle. They've had plenty of evidence. They know it's Jesus and they just repeatedly keep um, speaking evil against him. And in fact, shortly before this passage in 1234 through 37, uh, Jesus tells them of the unforgivable sin is to speak against the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so you can dive in and, and study that a little bit more if you would like. I believe that's in um, Matthew 12, 32, 33. It's right before 34 through 37. Uh, and so again, the power of speech, if you speak blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, that is the one unforgivable sin. Um, here he's telling them that, you know, every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. So the religious leaders, these are the brood of vipers were speaking evil of Jesus. I mean, he has no kind words to say about these people. This is the seriousness of speech and the words that we say. John MacArthur, in reference to this passage, he says that the most seemingly insignificant sin, even a slip of the tongue, carries the full potential of all hell's evil. He references James 3, 6, which says, and the tongue is a fire, the very, word, the very world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our body's parts as that which defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of our life and is set on fire by hell. He continues on and says, no infraction against God's holiness is therefore a trifling thing, and each person will ultimately give account of every such indiscretion. There is no truer indi indication of a bad tree than the bad fruit of speech. We see this in verses 33 through 35. So actually, the um, unforgivable sin must be before that. I think it's like 30 through 32. Verses 33, uh, he is referencing a, a tree and the root being in the heart, um, and producing good fruit. The poisonous snakes were known by their poisonous mouths, revealing evil hearts. Uh, he referenced Luke 6, 45, says the good person out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good, and the evil person out of the evil treasures brings forth what is evil, for his mouth speaks from that which fills his heart. He continues on, every person is judged by his words because they reveal the state of his heart. Wow. So this, this lowly little word that seems so simple, speak, can we see it? To speak, I speak, speaking, the power of our words and not just the power that we put on them. Jesus right here is saying the importance of the words that come out of our mouth. They are, a, they are rooted in our heart. The words are an expression of what is truly in our hearts. 
ouch, do I have some repenting to do. Um, and that is something I, my, I have a sharp tongue. My husband will tell you when we occasionally, we don't get in arguments very often, but when we get in arguments, that is like my, that's my thing. I learned it growing up and it's just my, it's just, it is definitely a sin of mine that I, that I deal with and have to repent for often. David Guzik says that Paul also wrote about the importance of our words, that if you, uh, this is Romans 10, 9. This is, this is the power of our words, not just, you know, showing the evil, but Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I mean, it doesn't get much more important than that, right? Confessing that Jesus is Lord. I mean, that's, there's some, some power in those words right there. And so I just, I hope that that maybe helps you think a little bit about your words the same way that it made me think about them. Um, I was super blessed by this time of study is something that I thought was very simple. I was going to walk away from not continue for this video ended up being very impactful for me personally. Um, and so, you know, I might do the same for you. Uh, I definitely wouldn't have made necessarily those connections just reading through those verses, but seeing them all grouped together in that way, the way that, you know, Ingrid pulls them together for us and to see all that similar theme and then look and go, man, the power of our words, the power of, of speaking, of um, what, it, what was it referred to? Uh, articulate sound, uttering articulate sounds. There's definite power behind that. So there is my study for the word speak. Um, now we're going to jump into the putting the card together. Now, sometimes I, you know, include things that go along with the word today is going to be a slight nod to that, but it really was just kind of pulling some things on my desk that I wanted to, to play with. So, um, what I have here is actually the same thing that I did last week using one of the full, uh, page stickers. It's like a traveler's notebook size sticker page in the kit. I cut it down in half and that is going to be my background. Very simple. We got very messy in the process video this week. So I'm trying to go not messy for this video today. Uh, but I did pull some other things that I wanted to use. I have been trying to find the perfect opportunity to use this stamp here. I love these wings. Uh, and so I thought this would be a good time to use one of those, just a big, bold piece there. But I'm actually going to attempt to stamp it on some fabric. This is actually one of the bags that a past kit of Open Journeys came in uh, or was wrapped in. And so I'm actually going to stamp on this and we're going to try to have some texture on there. We're also going to be using some wax seals. I have uh, this little die cut that I used, this new set from Tim Holtz. This is Vintage Labels. I just cut it out of a scrap, messy piece of cardstock that was on my desk. Um, and so I'm just trying to add a little bit of layers so it's not just all two dimensional. Uh, and then I had these. I had a stamp from the new Eccentric set that says Handle with Care, and then a remnant rub that says Fragile. I was just thinking, you know, we need to handle our words with care, our speech with care. We, you know, fragile handle with care. That was just kind of my thinking behind those pieces there. Um, and then we'll just kind of put things together. So let me go ahead, and put you guys on fast forward and we'll put together this card for the word speak. All right. So this card was on the struggle bus. I was getting a migraine as I was doing the first part of this video. And by the time I get to this point, it is well set in. And I decided to just power through, continue with the video. I wanted to stick with my schedule of getting this up on Wednesday. And I shouldn't have done that. I make a ton of mistakes. It doesn't come together exactly how I had envisioned, but I leave everything in there so you can see, you know, I struggle as well. Uh, I'm doing this voiceover the next day, so I kind of have the migraine hangover, so my speech is probably going to be a little rough, so we're just, we're going to wing it. I, you know, this, this is life, this happens sometimes, so, but to start with, I'm just keeping it very simple by adding that sticker background to the card and then we can start working on the elements. So I have this piece of fabric. I believe this is like a like dish towel maybe uh, and I just had like a scrap of it and I'm going to use my stamp positioning tool because I figured I'm probably going to have to stamp it multiple times. I want it to be 
a lot of contrast. I didn't want the stamping to be kind of soft and washed out. I wanted it, you know, a deep, as deep black as I could get it uh, on there. And so I'm loading it up in my stamp positioning tool and I am going to use Versifying Onyx black ink. Now, typically I tell you guys to use archival ink or stays on ink when you're stamping on fabric. I chose this just because this particular piece of fabric isn't going to be used. It's not a tab on a Bible page. It's not, you know, it's just going to be a decorative element and I'm not worried about wear and tear. So I decided to go with this because of the intensity of that black ink. And so you can see here, I was able to really get a nice impression. I roughly cut that out and then I'm just kind of fraying the edges. If you're worried about fraying, you probably want to stitch around the edges or add um, like some no fray to the edges. But like I said, this isn't something that's going to get handled a lot. So I'm not too worried about that. So here's my first mistake. I have that little uh, label piece there and I pull out fired brick and aged mahogany distress oxide ink. And I'm just using a brayer. I want it messy. I want it just over the top. Uh, so it's doing what I want it to, but the color is not at all what I wanted. It's turning out to be more like pink and I was wanting more red. <laughs> so I decided to go in with a uh, fired brick distress ink as I know the pink is coming from the oxidant, like the oxide aspect of those other two colors. So I try to go over it, but the oxide is really going to win out. It's still coming through the distress ink and really giving it this pink color, which is not that's not what I wanted. So you can see I'm kind of like debating because I don't feel good whether I want to recut it, redo it, but I decide to. Here's mistake number two. Uh, you might see what happened. I at this point don't realize I'd actually picked up the next size larger die. So this label, this second one is actually the next size bigger than that initial one that I'd used. But I don't realize that at this point. I'm going in with just regular fired brick distress ink and, you know, kind of using the brayer to wipe that across the top of it. I'm wanting just this kind of messy, splotchy look. And then as I go to assemble things, I'm like, what is, this isn't what I had in my mind. Why is this not fitting right? Like the aspect ratio is not right. Like I kind of staged things before I had started working on it and it's just not feeling right. But I'm thinking, okay, I've just got a migraine. Things just aren't flowing, aren't feeling well. I'm just gonna go with it. So I'm gluing down the wing. And then I know that I'm going to layer the uh, seal, the wax seal over the top of this. And so I'm thinking, okay, well, I don't know. What is, what is oh, I have the wrong label. <laughs> so I go and cut out another one, ink that one up the same way. And now I know it might not look like a big difference, but it was a big difference that that label was just competing too much with the wing um, size wise. So the smaller label is a little better. And again, I'm just kind of staging that wax seal to kind of get an idea of where that's going to go. But I, I think I was just forcing this too much. The, the layout and the idea I had in my mind wasn't going to work, but I was just bound and determined to make it work. And then here's another thing. I haven't used wax seals in a while. Um, Ingrid does have some really beautiful ones over in the Open Journey shop, which is one of the ones that I'm going to use here today. So I pulled out all my wax seal stuff, and I have two different kits. This one here has the wick in, like in the wax, and I'm melting it into the spoon, which you don't have to do with these. And so I'm sitting here, and I'm like, I don't remember doing this. I don't remember doing it this way. No, it's because you're supposed to not use the spoon with this particular wax. It just drips directly on the page. And so I'm like, oh, that's what I'm supposed to do. So then I'm kind of just making a mess. It's just, it's, it's the struggle bus, friends. <laughs> so I get a little puddle there, put that wax seal down on there. I'm going to deal with my mess over there off to the side, and then pull it off. Uh, and so at this point, I'm like, okay things are going to, it's going to work out okay. But I need to pull in a little bit more red. So I pull in one of the seals from the newest stamp set from Open Journey. I'm going to ink that up with that same fired brick distress ink. So at this point, I think I'm just adding finishing details. I'm like, okay, home stretch, we're getting there, right? No, it goes, it goes south here in a second. But I've got that fragile piece. I couldn't remember where in my mind I had thought that was going to go. So I'm trying to test it out different places 
decide to layer it up over here. So just, just to show you, it doesn't always go smooth. I don't always just naturally stick things down just where it needs to go and have everything balanced and laid out and the colors just right. Like there are things that happen. This is one of those, one of those days I stamped that piece. It's not great, but that's okay. Uh, with the wax seal, I wanted to kind of highlight the texture. So I get this wild, crazy idea to use foundry wax. This is stupid. Don't do this. This is not the product to use on this. So I'm rubbing it over the top of the wax seal. And with foundry wax, you have to heat it to get it to melt, basically. Like, it, that's what makes it really shiny. And I thought, okay, I can do it quick enough that I won't melt the wax. Well, it's 86 degrees in my house, so that wax already is warm. It's not really fully setting anyways because it's too hot in my house. So as soon as I take that heat tool to the foundry wax, it just melts the wax and obliterates the design of the seal. So I think, okay, well, maybe I can go in with a gold marker, highlight those edges, but I've kind of, it's just, it's, it's mush. It's a mess. It's not doing what I, I don't love the color of that gold pen that I used it is what it is. So I'm like, I'm just going to leave it, but I'm going to bring in some more gold to balance out the gold that's in the wax seal. So once again, I'm like, oh, foundry wax. <laughs> if you want to use foundry wax on this, you should do all of that before you put your wax seal down because foundry wax has to be heat set. Another thing I'm contending with is because it's so hot in my house. So the foundry wax already, I mean, the instant I'm putting it on the mat, it's already kind of a sludge rather than a liquid. So I wasn't able to splatter it like I wanted. So here I'm having to kind of dot it onto the page. So I'm not getting this really natural like splatter effect, but I'm still trying to go with it. I'm heat setting that so that it turns the shiny metallic that it's supposed to be. And then I'm being really careful not to get too close to the wax seal, but not careful enough because I once again melt the wax seal. And I'm just like, this is, <laughs> this is turning into such a mess. So I decided, you know, we'll go with it. I'll just melt the whole thing all over again and redo it. But because I've introduced the gold pen, I need to kind of swirl that into the wax, reset it. To clean up the foundry wax, you just use uh, alcohol. So I'm just gonna use alcohol to clean up my brush and stuff like that. So that is a little better, but now I've got a lot of gold swirled in there. So I still want to highlight and bring out the detail of that seal. So then I start grabbing black pens. None of my Micron pens would work on this slick wax. So I end up going with a Faber-Castell brush marker that gets the job done. I'm able to kind of bring out the details. So if you're gonna use wax seals, don't use foundry wax because the heat is not a good mix for it. Uh, probably shouldn't use wax seals at all when it's 86 degrees in your house. Cause even at this point, I mean, it's sat here for a few seconds. It's still a little like soft. It was not fully set because it was so warm uh, in my house, but we're gonna bring in some more gold because I didn't like the uh, foundry wax splatters. So this is what I should have done to begin with was use gold paint. So I'm just gonna splatter that around to get some more organic splatters, bring in some more gold. But even now you can see I kind of have four corners going. That's not typically what I do. So, you know, it just, it's not the best, but we got there. I went ahead and just printed off the back sheet from Canva once again, the same way that I did it last week with just all of the information about the word and then a little quote there from John MacArthur. Attached that to the back of the card and I'm gonna step away. I'm done, I was done fussing with it, done trying to get it. It is what it is, it's done. So there's a look at the finished card. Uh, hopefully that gives you some inspiration when you are hitting a rut and dealing with oopses along the way. Just, just keep going. Just keep going. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I mentioned today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching me fumble. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.